Hello and welcome. My name is Brian Kaplan, editor of The Banker. I'm here with Daniel Miles, the Capital Markets Editor, and we're discussing the Top 1000 results for 2018. So, Danielle, uh, you've been working on the top 1,000. Uh, what are the sort of key takeaways in 2018? I guess the key takeaway is that the global banking industry is a lot healthier today than it has been uh, for many years. So, over the course of 2017, we saw pre-tax profits and capital boast both post double digit growth uh, for the first time in about seven years. Okay, I so think. this is good news and we're sort of looking at perhaps, you know, a bit of a renaissance in the banking sector. So it seems. I mean, capital uh, capital improvements happened across the board. There was, weren't any sort of underperforming regions uh, and profit as well, except for one market, which we might talk about later. Uh, okay. Profits were good or uh, respectable in every major market. Okay, so tell me a little bit about how this works out regionally. I mean, presumably China is still up there, um, you know, driving the, the picture, is that right? Certainly in terms of capital, yes. So for the first time, we see the top, the biggest four Chinese banks uh, at the top of the table. So they've completely displaced uh, the US banks. Um, so it seems that we've had a sort of changing of the guard uh, in terms of the global rankings. Okay, but what about Europe? Because for so many years now, Europe has been a real cause of concern, hasn't it? Certainly in terms of profits it has. And last year, uh, some of the biggest European banks were you know, the, the biggest underperformers. But this year, they've staged a massive uh, comeback. Uh, and Europe in itself, I mean, the Eurozone uh, doubled its pre-tax profits last year. Germany did the same. The UK had the best profit recovery, the biggest profit turnaround right. out of pretty much any country uh, in the entire ranking. But of course, some of this is due to uh, recoveries, isn't it? So it's not that everything is rosy in Europe. It's mm -hmm. just that uh, UK had a bad year last year. Italy, you know, has recovered from losses. And some of the other countries, uh, what's going on in, in, say, Greece and Portugal? Right. So, yes, yeah, mm -hmm. so the southern European countries have staged a comeback as well. I mean, Italy's recovery is notable because almost half the banks in last year's ranking made a loss. This year pretty much all of them turned a profit. Portugal still made a loss overall but it's about a hundredth of the size as the year beforehand. Greece, the recovery is more modest, still made a loss but again about a third um, smaller than it was the year before. i have got NPLs improving. I mean they are on the verge of a recovery it seems. Okay, so better news in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, so where's the bad news this year? Right, so India uh, is the big underperformer when it comes to profits. Its banks uh, are responsible for almost half the losses in this year's rankings. Uh, but it seems like that's really tied to the central banks uh, clamping down on the state-owned lenders and their uh, rather bloated balance sheets in relation to NPLs. So it's just a, a result of them dealing with their, their NPLs. Okay, because I mean India kind of needs to have uh, a balance sheet and a, and a banking sector that goes along with the strength of its economy, really. Absolutely, yes. And this is uh, almost it's a bit of a case of a short-term pain, long-term gain, because really they're increasing their provisions to deal with NPLs but that cuts into their profits in the short term. So hopefully in a few years' time, we'll see things improve. OK, now while we're in Asia, I mean, what else has been going on there? Because there's been some other good performances in Asia, hasn't there? Yeah, so we spoke about China to start with, and obviously China grabs the headlines in terms of uh, the growth that its banks keep posting. But in actual fact, some of the other uh, key banking markets are doing just as well in terms of uh, percentage growth. So South Korea, for instance, has grown its capital base um, more than China for the past two years. Uh, Hong Kong and Thailand in 2017 were uh, posted the, the biggest growth in capital you know, more than any other country in Asia. So I think we need to be, start watching out for some of these smaller markets that are, that, that are certainly growing. Okay. Maybe that's something to watch for next year. Daniel, thank you very much. Thank you.